empty tables, silent classrooms, dusty lockers, and locked doors. These are just a few of the sites that become part of the everydayness at Lake Braddock Secondary School. It feels like almost yesterday that these hallways were overflowing with students making their way to lunch. The usual site, packs of students loitering and socializing at the front entrance. It always looked to me as a clear rejection of the busy, fast-paced lifestyle that encompasses being a student here is one of the sites that I will miss. The parking lot at the front of the building, which always seems to have a scarce number of open spots, now looks like an empty, abandoned lot. The courtyard, a place where students would go at the end of the day to meet their pals and strike up casual conversation, is now haunted by the presence of shady chairs and rusted tables, which serve as a reminder of the community that once frequented there. So, where is everyone? What happened and how did what was the heart of 3,112 students' social lives come to resemble a ghost town overnight? And now to the coronavirus, we are seeing some really long lines once again forming. As a record number of Americans remain hospitalized, some experts predict we could see upwards of 400,000 new infections a day. In the midst of spring 2020, 16 COVID cases quickly became 10,000. Suddenly, we were amid a countrywide lockdown. Soon enough, America found itself rethinking and reassessing the risks of what were once the routine of the American way. To most, the pandemic felt like something we were not prepared for at all. It changed how we learn, how we gather and communicate with each other, how we dress and how we behave around others. It changed our lifestyles, affected every one of us in one way or another, for the better or for the worse. But just like that one quote says, never underestimate the ability of the human animal to adapt to its environment. So, where did we go when colleges, government offices, supermarkets, restaurants, and schools were closed to the public? Well, we moved to the network. Physics lessons uploaded to YouTube. Energy equals Hello and good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Church. I'm so Religious glad Religious gatherings live streamed to Facebook and classes being it. held on video conferences online. We had to migrate a large part of our lives to the internet. For a lot of students in the Lake Braddock community, this meant moving their social lives almost completely to the internet. Do you think that COVID has affected the amount of time people spend on social, social media? Yeah, most definitely. Just because, um, especially people our age are you know, uh, confined to their home or even their room, um, if they catch the virus or are quarantining. Um, and you know, there's only limited things you can do. And I'm sure the uh, amount of screen time has gone up for everyone. How do you feel social media has impacted the relationship between you and your friends? I think it's definitely been a good thing. Um, it helps me stay more connected with my friends, especially because of like COVID and all. I can't really see them. It helps me stay more connected. It has allowed me to stay in contact with friends I haven't seen over the quarantine or over the summer. Um, reaching out to them, even if it's like a week to week basis, just keeps our uh, friendship alive. I think social media like in itself, it's just like a phenomenal idea. So like, um, I think the world is definitely better off that it does exist. So, yeah. Social media, once considered just a fun and creative place to make friends and socialize, became the sign for a new form of community. A perfect example of this is the Like Braddock SGA Instagram page, which is well known for its weekly tips to help keep students motivated and inspired while improving themselves and fighting the sense of isolation. In summary, social media has changed the way we communicate, express our creativity, and make our voices heard, overall improving our connectivity with others during the quarantine. Another way to look at it is that social media has helped us cope with the pandemic lifestyle, which over the past few months has become our new normal. It was only a couple of weeks ago that everything seemed like it was getting back on track. School boards were having meetings about reopening. States around the U.S. were slowly and cautiously lifting their restrictions. But suddenly, cases started to rise once again. Health experts are warning of a second wave of COVID-19 infections as the winter months loom. Members of our medical community say that they do believe we're on the cusp of a second surge. And the second wave of the 1918 pandemic was more severe than the first, and I expect the second wave of the coronavirus to be more severe uh, this time around. Make no mistake, we are in the second surge. This is the highest daily rate we've seen in Chicago since the tail end of the pandemic's first wave back in May. A CNN article published on November 18th 
reported that, quote, at this rate, the coronavirus is killing at least one American every minute of the day. At least 1,707 new COVID-19 deaths were reported Tuesday. According to data from John Hopkins University, that's the highest daily death rate since May 14th. COVID-19 has forced us to rethink, re-strategize, and make irreversible modifications to the way we live our daily lives. Schools may partially reopen, restrictions may be lifted, but it's clear that our lives will never be the same. Empty tables, silent classrooms, dusty lockers and locked doors will remain. No cheers, no laughter, only the wind whistling through the empty football field of the Bruins. No prom ball will be held in the ghostly gym this year. Neither homecoming will be hosted in the voiceless hallways. We will overcome this. We will adapt and learn to coexist with the virus. But a new strain will likely hit the world periodically, and America, education, fellowship, and Lake Braddock will never be the same.